Coming from a lower middle class family in India, I had a very bare bones study table in my 11th grade. And by the time I got to the college, this is how my working area looked like. Well, just kidding. This is how it actually looked like. And by the third year of the college, we got a very nice table and a chair. Well, I'm thankful to the college. And then forward, fast forward to 2018 uh, is when I got a table to work on stuff during the weekends. And finally, in 2020 lockdown is when I got a monitor, a keyboard and a mouse. Towards the later part of 2020 is when I got like the height adjustable table, a chair and monitor arms. And today, here I am after 14 years, like sitting in a working area, which I believe I always aspired for. Is it the best though? Well, just tack along as I try to find the answer. Folks, my entire working area is actually divided into five parts. This is the entire room. Here we have the entrance and this is my table. Let's call it table one. This is the moving area. This is a moving area where my chair is and where I generally move around. And then we have the table number two. This is for all the parallel tasks or the lighter weight tasks that I want, I want to do. Let's say I want to play a game or something. And uh, part number four is, you can call it the junkyard where all the extra stuff lives, the camera, the lights. And the fifth part is the library. Without wasting any time, let's jump to table number one. Yeah. So this, my friends, is the table number one and all the fun stuff happens over here. First thing I have is the mouse, which is from Logitech. The model is G502X and I use it wirelessly in the USB dongle mode. Then I have the keyboard, which is a custom mechanical keyboard. I got the base one from Amazon and then I installed custom keys and keycaps. All the links are in the description below. Then I have this uh, palm rest, which is very important because my keyboard has a height and if I don't use it, I might get repetitive strain injury. Then I have the chickpea and you don't need me to tell you uh, like why they exist. I have the Lenovo Thunderbolt 4 dock. I have Google Home. like to turn on and turn off the lights. Then uh, we have these really nice neck band earphones. For some reason, I, I don't like the other ones, the ones that are similar to AirPods. Then I have the Kindle with a very nice cover. I have this handheld gaming PC, which is Ion Neo Geek 1S. It is really powerful. It can run all the AAA games, but I hardly game. It's just acting as a decor on my table. Then let's talk about the elephants in the room, the two big monitors that you see. These are from BenQ. BenQ sent me these two weeks back to try them out and I'm having a blast. These are like, these monitors are made for programmers when i say what i mean is the aspect ratio is three by two which means more horizontal and vertical content on the screen why because these are 4k as well and let me show you where it shines i have my android studio my emulator my logs everything entirely on one screen now one surprising thing about these monitors is that the monitor arms that came along with them are amazing so they have a magnetic cover under which all the wires can be routed nicely the wires enter from beneath and they come out at the top like this and then while assembling the monitor arms i noticed that bank has actually gone above and beyond in the engineering. If you see, they even placed this Allen key in its own placeholder. I mean, I haven't seen any other company doing that. Wow. Wow. Then we have this fancy function bar here. It just has one button and using which I can change the modes, which we will just talk about. I can change brightness, contrast, and a few other modes as well. They call it the coding hotkey. Well, the USB about these monitors is their eye care related features. And the first one is the coding mode. And the moment you turn on the coding mode, all the blacks and the grays on the screen actually become more black and the text really pops out. It is very pleasant on the eyes and really helps during coding. Then we have this low blue light plus, which is basically the blue light filter, which is built in inside the monitors itself. You can also use the, like the one from your laptop or your machine. Next, we have the night hours protection for the night owl programmers. Well, this is literally for the total dark sessions. When you have the entire room, uh, it's very dark. Again, thank you has gone above and beyond in engineering. It actually breaks the low brightness limit that we have on other monitors. Then we have the bright Brightness Intelligence Gen 2, which is basically a light sensor and uh, it can adjust brightness and the night hour protection automatically based on the ambient lighting that you have. Then we have this really nice backlight, which they call Moon Halo. It is dimmable, you can change the temperature as well, and it is really nice. It is very comforting to the eyes, especially when coding in the dark. And the fun part is that all of this can be controlled using this software called DisplayPilot 2. 
You can install this app, control everything. You can also control the timing of the blue light filter using the software. We also have the KVM switch using which I can actually switch between my desktop and my laptop without plugging in or plugging out any wires at all. Let's quickly talk about the ports. For the display input, it has a DP port, HDMI port and a USB-C port at the back. Uh, for the USB hub, either you can use the USB-C port, which I just talked about, or they also have an additional USB-B port, which is helpful for my desktop. Then for the downstream, uh, which means all the USB peripherals, it uh, it has three USB ports, USB A ports on the front and one USB C port at the back. The best part is that to connect my laptop, I just need one USB connection and it connects everything, including the display and the USB devices. If you talk about the price, uh, it, it costs around 599 here in the US. Uh, I'm not sure about the India price. And if you want the one with the monitor arm, it'll cost you 629. So I, I didn't show you the bottom of the table. There is another interesting part of the working area. So if you see here, this long running panel, it actually hosts all the extra wires all the extra wires are actually tucked in inside of it i mean i have i still have like um, a few wires running here and there but those are because i removed my desktop and those are extra sure sure and you also see this extension which is actually like attached upside down so that it, it's really easy for me to plug in more devices if i want to folks welcome to table number two and this is where uh, i usually do the light mode tasks like the tasks that need to happen in parallel with the primary stuff that i'm doing on table number one so let's start with the small little ubuntu box i use this to fire custom builds of android operating system because i'm a framework developer i usually like to do uh, some custom Android stuff on the side. It also acts as a network attached storage. So all my photos and everything from my mobile device are actually uploaded to this small little box, which forwards it to the SSD that are at attached. And in the future, I have plans to have uh, an S3, an AWS S3 Glacier machine where uh, all these photos can be uploaded to. I also have this beast of a workstation, the desktop PC, which I don't use it anymore. I created it uh, during the COVID lockdown and upgraded it over 2021, 2022. Uh, I think I should probably just set it off now. Fun part, this actually has the RTX 3070 from NVIDIA founders edition then uh, we have uh, we have a standard logitech g402 mouse apple magic keyboard and then i have this another monitor from bank this is rd 240 Q. Uh, it has all the goodness. This is also a programming monitor. It has all the goodness from the RD280 UA, but it still misses out on a few things. So the first thing that you should know is this is 24 inches. This is 2K resolution and it has um, 16 by 10 aspect ratio. So it's still you still get a little more vertical space. And the things that you will miss out on is it comes with a simpler arm and not the fancy one on the other monitor that we saw. It doesn't have the moon halo backlight and it doesn't have the KVM switch, but you still get the USB-C input and the USB of functionality along with the function bar including all the eye care features that we saw earlier this monitor really shines for programmers having limited working space and that's all about the new working area that i'm living in right now well i hope you found it helpful and let me know what's missing in this setup and also if you want to show your setup please attach images in the comment section and uh, let's see what you've got well uh, i guess i'll see you in the next one and uh, by the way, thanks, like huge shout out to BenQ for sending these monitors. I mean, I really feel that my setup is more complete now. It's more like uh, I need to get rid of a few items now. And that's all. I will see you in the next one. Bye.